He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We begin with thanksgiving for baptism. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God, who was, who is, and who is to come. And at this time, I would like to invite our young and or young at heart friends to come and gather around the font. All are welcome if you'd like to. But. Oh, come on. I'm not the only young at heart.
God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Thank you. 
A reading from 1 Corinthians. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father. After he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. <clears throat> then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
maybe a little too much wine, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Jesus was arrested and taken away from them and put on trial, and then they gave him the death penalty, and then they killed him, and now here are the disciples, the apostles, hiding, terrified, scattered, because this whole project has fallen apart suddenly. Three years undone in three days. And who was this guy after all? The son of a carpenter who had shirked his, his responsibilities to the family business and he ran off to the desert and then when he came back he was raving about healing people and feeding people. He could make food appear out of thin air. He could raise the dead. He was claiming to have the power to be able to forgive sins. It all seemed so amazing to them at the time. So impossibly amazing to them. They had even been tempted to think that Jesus was the one, the Messiah, the one foretold by the prophets. But convicted criminals and the crucified don't get to tell their story. They were probably thinking everything Jesus told them. They forgot about all of it because none of it mattered after all, right? His words and his deeds had died with him. Who would remember him, much less remember them? The Caesars and the Herods of this world, they control the narrative. The story is theirs to tell. When Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them, these women who were faithful to Jesus to the bitter end, the ones who didn't run away, when they reported to the apostles and all the rest that men in dazzling clothes had showed up to this empty tomb and reminded them of what Jesus said, that on the third day he would rise again that all of this was supposed to happen. It was happening exactly the way he had foretold it. When they told the disciples this, the disciples were so convinced that it could not possibly be true that they brushed this story off as nothing more than fantasy. So, Eli was just at St. Paul, so he's heard this already, so I'm not going to force you to come up here if you don't want to. And I'm not going to force the little, the little guys to come up. But if you want to come up, I'm going to be reading this book. And it's a picture book. So if you, want to, if you want to get a better view of it, you're more than welcome to come up here. And I'm going to read to you this book. It's called Sweet People Are Everywhere by Alice Walker. Have a seat. Make yourself comfortable. Some of the people in Turkey are very sweet. Some of those in Afghanistan are very sweet. Some of the people in the United States are very sweet. In Canada, too, some of the people are sweet. In Mexico, you will definitely find sweet people. Likewise in Sudan, there are sweet people among the Zulu in South Africa, and every language group in Africa has some sweet people in it. There are sweet people in Iceland. Right now? <laughs> and in Russia. There are many sweet people in Korea. There are millions of sweet people in China. There are sweet people in Japan. If the sweet people were the leaders in historically warring countries, they would treat each other much better. 
There are sweet people in Congo. There are sweet people in Egypt and sweet people in Australia. Many sweet people are in Norway. Numerous sweet people are in Spain. There are many sweet people in Ghana and Kenya and sweet people also in Guam and the Philippines. There are sweet people in Cuba. Many sweet people exist in Iran. There are sweet people in Libya, in Colombia. Sweet people are in Vietnam. Sweet people exist in England and Myanmar. There are sweet people for sure in Ireland. Sweet people are in France. Sweet people are holding on in Syria. They are doing the same in Iraq. Some sweet people live in Venezuela. Many very sweet people live in Brazil. There are sweet people in Israel, as there are sweet people in Palestine. Actually, in almost every house on the planet, there is at least one very sweet person that you would be happy to know. Sweet people are everywhere. Being sweet, they must not be disappeared. We are lost if we can no longer experience how sweet human beings can be. Promise me never to forget this, no matter how far you go or who sends you. Sweet people are everywhere. That's it. That's the book. That's the whole, that's the whole world. Right? All right, guys, thanks so much for coming up. In his ministry and with his whole life and even with his death, Jesus glorified God and reflected God's love. It's a miracle. The disciples didn't believe the story that the women told because they believed a different story. Told the one told to them by the Caesars and the Herods of this world. That justice is determined by the state. That anyone who is different is dangerous. They believed that a fragile and frail flesh and blood human being could not possibly be God. They believed that the son of questionable parentage could not possibly be the Prince of Peace. That the one who dies on a cross could never transform that instrument of death into the source of everlasting life. The point of this book that I just read to you is that of course there are sweet people everywhere, but we need a reminder of that. Because our worldview is shaped by people and entities and organizations that benefit from us not believing this. Benefit from us believing that there are not sweet people in places like Russia and China. <clears throat> it is unfortunately novel to say that there are sweet people everywhere. The point of today, however, is that we are not at the mercy of people and entities and organizations that seek to drive us apart. We don't have to believe the opinions and the falsehoods and the lies that we're told about our neighbors. We can believe that our neighbors are sweet 
and kind and merciful and brave and forgiving and loving and worthy of being loved. In every city and farm and refugee camp and hamlet and border crossing and war zone and house all across the entire world. We don't have to believe the stories that were told by the Caesars and the Herods, by the wealthy and the powerful who try to control us by controlling the narrative. They think they're in control of the story. Today, we say, you are not. We can believe the women, believe that this story is not fantasy. It's true that the tomb is empty, that death is not something to fear, that the names of the wealthy and powerful will fade from history, and yet the story of Jesus, this convicted criminal crucified on a cross, that the story of Jesus will inspire the hearts and minds and hands of sweet people throughout all time and place. We can believe that love will always win because when we believe that, love does win. When you believe it, love does win. Like the women who discover that Jesus is alive, called to believe and tell this incredible story of how we are saved by the unconditional love of God in Christ Jesus. We are called to know, to believe, to have faith that this is our story too. This is our story to tell. Go out and tell this story of God's unconditional, amazing love. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen.
let us now profess our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this day of resurrection joy, let us offer our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and our world. Renewing God, the good news of your resurrection changed the world. Give church leaders and all the baptized the same excitement as the women at the tomb, and inspire us to share your abundant life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Sustaining God, your creation abounds with signs of new life in budding trees and newborn creatures. Provide fertile soil, ample sunlight, and nourishing rain for the growth of plants, and provide farmers with a plentiful harvest. Merciful God, we see our prayer. Sheltering God, strengthen and sustain all who support vulnerable people across the world, especially those in the Ukraine, the homeless in this country, and anyone else who needs that assistance. Empower government agencies and international organizations that provide for refugees and migrants forced to leave their homelands. Merciful God, we see our prayers. Encouraging God, you do a new thing among us. We pray for those gripped by fear and anxiety or who suffer in any way, especially all those who have lost someone pandemic. Send us your healing presence to places of hunger, pain, illness, or overwhelming sorrow. Merciful God. Sustaining God, you offer endless ways for us to delight in your grace. Give this community of faith a sense of joy and wonder in exploring new avenues of faith formation, worship, and discipleship. Merciful God, we see our prayer. Resurrecting God, you make us alive in Christ. Thank you for blessing us with faithful witnesses who rest in you, especially John and Linda and anyone who you wish to say at this time. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We offer to you these petitions and those we carry in our hearts, trusting in your abundant and ever-present mercy. Amen. 
Friends, the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let's share a sign of God's peace now. Peace.
You gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together. In your peaceful reign. And you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Come, Holy Spirit, and 
make here the body of Christ. Breathe onto this food that it bring us your life. Empower your people throughout the world to preach and teach, baptize and feed, pray and sing, comfort and heal. By your spirit, preserve what is faithful. Reform what we treasure. Create in us what is vital and new. We honor you now and forever. We honor you now and forever. O God, before time, O God, at the end, Father, Son, and Spirit, we laud you, covenant Lord, our Redeemer, the strength of truth, glory and praise, blessing and worship, honor and power and might be to you, our God, forever and ever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who hunger, all who thirst, come. You may be seated.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now, friends, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak and help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 364.